Well, we learned today that Australia is going to attempt to lobby 16 countries and the European Union against a move by UNESCO to place the Great Barrier Reef on the World Heritage in Danger list. But is the reef in as much trouble as the so-called experts at the United Nations are saying? Well, joining me to discuss that is marine physicist Peter Ridd, who has consistently called for environmental data on the reef to be reviewed for factual errors, and he actually lost his job for doing so. Peter, thank you so much for your time tonight. Firstly, can I ask about the politics of this? The assessment is going on, irrespective of the data. The UN is using what it's using. This is a smart move by Australia to convince these 16 countries that there's not a problem here. Yes, that's right. And all they have to do is use the latest data from the Australian Institute of Marine Science on the coral cover, which shows that uh, almost all regions are above average or above average, in some cases, almost record levels of coral cover in the last year. So the data shows unequivocally that the Great Barrier Reef is in extremely good condition. There's far more coral now than there was 10 years ago in many, many zones. And the areas that were worst damaged by the 2016 bleaching event, where there was all the hoo-ha, has completely and utterly recovered uh, to its previous levels of coral. Well, may I ask, what causes the coral bleaching, which then triggers the environmentalists to say uh, the end is nigh and the reef is never going to uh, come back? It can be many things. It can be uh, hot water, cold water or fresh water. But the one that... that uh does the most is hot water. Whenever you get a, a, a summer where the water is very still and a, a clear sky, there's inevitably be, uh, bleaching occurs. Uh, so when we get an El Nino year, you're very likely to get a, a bleaching, which is what happened in 2016, uh, 1998. And of course, the predictions are that there'll be more and more of these hot weather events due to climate change. Now, I disagree with that, but that is the theory that they're working on. OK, so they're extrapolating the climate change thesis, which we know they have very flawed models um, on, and they've even admitted that at times. They've taken that thesis, they've applied it to the reef and said, well, if we don't stop fresh water or warm water or cold water reaching the reef, uh, we could have coral bleaching. Instead of every 25 years, we might have it every 10 years, 15 years, five years. Well, that's right. And in fact, there's been some very spurious uh, figures they've been throwing around some of the scientific organisations over the last couple of years saying there's been five bleaching events, in the, uh, three bleaching events in the last five years. Now, this is completely inaccurate. There were three bleaching events, but they only affected, uh, you know, certain sections of the reef. And if you look at any given part of the reef, there's only been one bleaching event in the last 15 years, which is about average. Now, the problem that the minister has got is that the people upon which she should rely um, from the science and management organisations, they're the ones who are themselves in their own um, documents from their own institutions are saying that the reef is in danger. So the minister's actually got a bit of a problem because the people who she, she's relying on to tell the story that the reef is not in danger are actually doing the bidding of the UNESCO. And so this is where all our institutions appear to be occupied by people who have an agenda irrespective of the data. You've tried to expose some of this, of course, and, and uh, I understand you, you lost your job about it and it's been right through the courts. How pervasive is the pressure to go along with the zeitgeist and just tick off on these alarmist events in the name of international diplomacy or anything else? Well, if any scientist steps out of line, um, they may not have quite such draconian things that happen to me, but they will certainly find their career will be curtailed. I know of quite a few scientists who are well and truly in the system who, who would have a similar view to me on the reef, that it's nowhere near as damaged as, as people make out. But they cannot afford to uh, put their head above the parapet, and this is the problem. We've got to get quality assurance systems into the science. We've got to stop the group think, which is completely pervasive through the system. This is what the minister needs to do, because at the moment she's going to lose this battle because we cannot rely on the institutions. We need to be able to rely on the institutions who are also advising UNESCO, until we do that, the reef is going to be classified as endangered. We've got to do quality assurance on the science. Peter, just quickly before I have to go, um, have you sent your data and information to, about this to the minister and has there been any response from either her or the department? 
I've had various um, contacts with the minister and uh, th through various, uh, you know, other agencies, but they don't seem to be interested in doing this quality assurance check, which is ultimately what needs to be done. But she is fully aware of my views on the quality assurance problem. Okay, we need to have an audit in there. Peter Ridd, thank you very much for spending time with us on the Bolt Report tonight. I really appreciate your expertise. Thanks very much.